This is a relatively quick and straightforward video about eta squared and estimating it in SPSS. And it's an important one because how SPSS labels eta squared uh, in a particular menu option is misleading. And I'll hope to give you in this video the confidence to know that you're interpreting eta squared appropriately and not partial eta squared, which is different. So I'm going to assume that you already kind of know the difference between eta squared and partial eta squared and you're interested in using it and interested in estimating it in SPSS. So here's an example data set where I've got a dependent variable measured on a continuous scale and an independent variable uh, that's got four groups in it. So this is just a regular one-way between subjects ANOVA or a one-way between groups ANOVA. So I, some people would go into analyze and compare means and run the analysis by putting the time variable in the dependent list and font size in the factor list. Now if you click on options, there's actually no option to get eta squared or any effect size estimate when you use the one-way uh, menu option in SPSS. Now you could calculate eta squared yourself by hand. It's not very difficult. Here's the formula for eta squared. Sums of squares between groups or between subjects divided by sums of squares total. And that represents the percentage of variance accounted for in the dependent variable by the independent variable. That's eta squared right there. So I could calculate that here with a calculator. I calculated earlier. I'll just show you the steps. So sums between groups is what SPSS calls the sums of squares between or sums of squares between subjects. So 2692.517 divided by sums of squares total and 3620.400 and I get 0.744 rounded so 74.4 percent of the variance in the dependent variable was accounted for by the independent variable in this analysis now having to calculate this by hand is not optimal ideally SPSS would calculate it for us now you can get SPSS to calculate eta squared for you but it in the GLM utility so you got to go into general linear model and univariate, but this is where it gets a bit complicated because SPSS mislabels eta squared here, and I'll show you what I mean. So if you put time in the dependent variable and font size in the fixed factors, click on options and click on estimates of effect size, now it's going to calculate eta squared, but it calls it something else. It calls it partial eta squared, and you can see that for font size, which is the independent variable, here's the sums of squares that I showed you earlier, 2692.517. And here's the effect size estimate of 0.744, 74.4% of the variance. But SPSS labels it partial eta squared. Do not make the mistake thinking and then reporting that you have got partial eta squared. There is no partial eta squared in a one-way between groups or a one-way between subjects ANOVA. There is only the possibility of eta squared, not partial eta squared. And here's that sums of squares total that SPSS reports as corrected total. So the reason SPSS does this is probably not a good one. Uh, it's taking into consideration that for most GLM procedures, you might be including another fixed factor here. So you'd have a factorial between subjects ANOVA, and that is when partial eta squared is a possibility and is estimated and should probably be reported. But when you have one between subjects factor, it is in fact eta squared. So I hope this video gives you the confidence to use the GLM utility to estimate eta squared quickly for you rather than having to use the soft calculator and disregarding the label partial eta squared because that means something very different uh, in the context of ANOVAs. Uh, so it's an eta squared estimate. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you next time.